So are you a moon guy or a Mars guy? Because I've got some thoughts. I did a goofy tier list video a couple of weeks back about where I think would be the best place to live in the solar system. In it, I listed Mars, the moon, and Titan all as A tier because I think they'd be pretty sick options compared to the utter disaster that is a lot of other places in the neighborhood. But just ranking them inherently reduces the necessary complexity in actually understanding what humanity should be doing. The general public is kind of fascinated with Mars. There's a ridiculous amount of TV shows and books and movies about it. Honestly, I think that's why SpaceX is so obsessed with getting there. It's less about it actually being the best place and more about the marketing of convincing people it's a cool place to go. Don't get me wrong, I think it's cool that the world's richest person is trying to make people enthusiastic about space travel. Kinda wish he'd be less cringe about it, but I appreciate the enthusiasm. The red dusty landscape is proper sci-fi material, but a lot of people in the comments section of my video told me to suck the red dusty farts out of their asshole because the moon is clearly better. And you know what? I can't be mad, you're kinda right. So why is the moon so great? Easy, cause it's right there, I can fucking see it with my dirty evolved monkey eyeball. It's three days away, that's less time than it takes the average Discord moderator to take a shit. It still blows my mind, there's a whole other world and you can just lean your head out of a window and see it. I can see it right now, I'm making fucking eye contact. To get to Mars is half a year, minimum. Have you any idea how much turd a human being produces in six months? Now imagine containing it all in a zero-g environment and using it as the fertilizer to grow the only food you're gonna have. Sorry to interrupt, this is just a quick message to say, statistically speaking, you're probably not subscribed, so I'll make you a deal. Press the subscribe button and I won't come over to your house and do this. Give it a button, Dad! Alright, thanks, back to the video. The moon is the practical choice, because it's so close, and it's an airless world, and in this instance that might actually be helpful. Also, since it's so close, when, not if, something goes horribly, horribly, horribly wrong, you can send a rescue mission rather than immediately resorting to cannibalism. On Mars, you're one miscalculated potato harvest away from repurposing your crewmates' skulls as a drinking horn. So let's get to the good stuff. The moon is basically the solar system's version of your weird uncle's junkyard, because it looks worthless, but if you dig a little deeper, you'll find some really weird sh**. Here's a breakdown of the regolith that you find on the moon. Regolith is the science word for dirt. Oxygen is about 40-45%, so yeah, the dirt is mostly oxygen. You just have to figure out how to unglue it from all the other bullshit. But the moon has all the oxygen we'll ever need, and more. It's just shitty free trial oxygen where you have to do a bunch of technical pissing about to get the oxygen just on its own. Silicon is about 21%, which is great for making solar panels or microchips or micro fries if you're American. Iron is like 10 or 15%, so you can use that to make spaceships or bases or cities or a giant moon cannon. Go nuts, forge a knife, become the first celebrity moon chef. Do what you fucking like. Who am I to judge? Don't let anyone tell you what you can do. Aluminium's 10%, that's great for starting arguments about how to pronounce aluminium. There's other stuff like sulfur, calcium, magnesium. I don't know what you can do with these, but you can definitely line them up next to each other, label them accordingly, and then the label will say SCAMG. You never know when that'll come in handy. There's also water ice at the bottom of the moon's permanently shadowed craters, like that delicious morsel of mystery substance you get on the rim of your shower's plug hole. Water ice can obviously be melted for water and reused infinitely if you maintain a closed loop system. You can split it for air and fuel, or just make some really depressing ice sculptures. Whatever you do, don't tell Nestle, cause they'll come and dip their balls in it. There's helium-3 as well. This is like the mythical unicorn of fusion fuel. I can practically sense Elon Musk getting bricked up thinking about it. It's basically useless for now, but if we ever figure out fusion reactors, this might be what the upcoming moon wars will be fought over. Space wars fought over dust. It's like Dune except with fewer twinks and more asphyxiation. There's also a bunch of rare earth elements on the moon. These are useful in various technologies. They're only scattered around in tantalizing traces, but hey, at least we'll be able to make robots mine it rather than paying slave wages to a shitload of destitute children in the Congo and telling them to dig it up with their bare hands. As such, this looks like a very small accidental victory for humanity. A victory nonetheless. So to sum it up, the moon has everything we need to build a space colony, assuming you can extract it without the razor sharp lunar regolith filing your fucking nipples off. Now regarding gravity, or the moon's relative lack of it, frankly I've had enough of Earth's gravity well, I'm sick of its shit. The moon's gravity is like one sixth of the Earth's. Imagine how far you could piss. More importantly, rockets need way less energy to launch from the moon, so you can finally stop crying over your Delta V budget. Low gravity means we can build insane sci-fi crap as well, like a space elevator, a literal tether from the moon to space. It would actually work here, made out of materials that actually exist in amounts that exceed the mass of a gerbil's nutsack. Since there's no atmosphere, we can also build electromagnetic 
kinetic launchers to yeet materials sideways into orbit. Picture a railgun, but instead of bullets, it's hurling lunar rocks at Mac. Holy shit. Building stuff is where the moon flexes harder than a park bench under the immense gravitational force of your mother-in-law, because with all its resources and low gravity, it's the perfect place to build humanity's shiny space future. We could start off in underground bunkers to hide from radiation and micrometeorites. The moon has giant-ass subsurface lava tubes we could live in, which you could think of as a depressing place to live, or you can think of as a pre-made James Bond villain layer. I know which one I'd rather live in. We can strip mine the regolith for oxygen, metals, helium-3, whatever. No ethics to worry about, no ecosystems to fuck up irreparably. No one lives there. We aren't burning any forests to the ground or filling any oceans with oil slick. There is nobody's shit to fuck up there. We can do what we want. We can take everything. Then you can build massive solar farms to keep the lights on. There's no wind to blow dust over the panels. The sun shines for half a month at a time. Better yet, fire the solar cells down the electromagnetic launcher and park them in space. Park them at a Lagrange point. It'll be sunny literally forever. And we're going from the moon already. It won't even be hard to get there. Bonus points if we then beam the energy back to the earth, because between that and finally pulling our fingers out of our butt holes and converting to nuclear, maybe we can stop filling the air with so much spicy bullshit. And then maybe your children won't have to live in a world that's just a desert with a tsunami slapping them in the face once a day. Those electromagnetic launches and space elevators will turn the moon into a giant interplanetary spaceport. We'll have all the refueling stations for Mars-bound trips that we will ever need. We could also have lunar telescopes on the far side where the Earth's light pollution can't get in the way. Astronomy on Earth is like trying to look at a grain of rice at the far side of a dark room whilst also being three inches away from the full beams of a Volvo. The moon has the capacity to become humanity's cosmic Costco, except instead of bulk buying toilet paper, you're being gifted essentially infinite resources, which I'm sure all the governments and corporations will use exclusively for non-nefarious purposes. Basically, the moon isn't just a stepping stone. It's a moon. What are you, a Sasquatch? How big are your feet? So the moon is close, resource rich, a perfect place to start building humanity's near space infrastructure. It'll enable us to do some absolutely crazy shit in the future, and it will become exponential if we just put the resources into it now. Sure, colonising Mars immediately sounds sexier, but that's like skipping foreplay and going straight to slamming your junk in the car door. So there you have it. Stop skipping the tutorial, start with the moon. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you want. I'll catch you next time. Over and out.